Anthony Daniel, thank you so much for taking the time. You are C3 PO, the golden guy since uh, my childhood, and I love it because in every movie you personate him, and uh, in every other um, thing of the franchise, like in the Clone Wars, you lend him the, your voice, especially in the video games. So, what kind of humbling feeling is it for you being this golden guy and bringing them to life? It's such a big uh, phenomenon that I have been in all of the films. It's, it's almost that uh, it's too big for me to recognize. Do you know? I just know I have done all this, and I know that people hopefully have enjoyed it, and that I am, like many of the other members of the cast, uh, part of everyone's childhood. It's, it's gone around the planet recognizing this figure. <clears throat> and, and often, of course, it is my voice that you will hear, although it is dubbed into French and German and uh, even to, into American, I understand. Um, but normally it's me. And a lot of people learn English from watching the movies. It's a very good way, uh, instead of sitting with a grammar book. And because people can relate to this character, he, do, he does connect with people. And I'm very lucky that George did use my voice to uh, be in the film, because that means I have been asked to do so many voiceovers, so many cartoons, so many narrations, and so on. So my career really has been, for the last 40 years, has been Star Wars, but not just the films. When you started filming in 1976, um, have you ever a, a kind of idea what that will be in the next 40 years? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, when we were filming it, we, the whole cast, Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill and, and Harrison and myself, we thought it was crazy stuff. We, we did it properly, we were professional. But I remember thinking, well, nobody is ever going to watch this. It's just you know, silly. And uh, it wasn't an easy shoot to, for anybody, I think, for me, for George. Um, and then the film opened and how wrong we were. Uh, some magic happened. It came at a particular point in time and um, it, it started everything. But the thing that really started it, if you, if you consider, is the reaction of those few people. Very few people went at the beginning. There was no publicity. It just opened. Then people just went crazy and they got their friends in. Within days it had become this phenomenon. So really, the fans weren't there on day one. They were there in thousands on day two, and in millions in the last 40-odd years. And it is down to the, the fans' reaction. Fans are, uh, is a strange word. People who came and liked the movie and told their friends, and they came back and watched it again and again. And back in the original, you could only go to the cinema, the movie, uh, because there was no home video. And so it has grown and has become a part of people's lives. but. In real terms, it was down to those original friends uh, of the film. Of course, I'm very grateful because it means I have now been in the nine movies and also two spin-off Star Wars movies, plus everything else. So how amazing, out of nowhere, to have a career like that. It's a particular kind of career, and possibly not the one I had in mind, but how lucky I was, I am. How is it for you wearing that costume? So can you describe it first? Because it looks so great, but I can imagine it's very hard to wear. It's it's not the easiest costume to wear, <clears throat> and he does look great from the outside, and from the inside there are always issues, and materials change, and they get brittle or they harden up or whatever, and become. And I have to find continually. I have to find ways of faking something I would love to do, and as a human, I can do perfectly naturally. Uh, as him, I have to work out what I can do, how much I can do, and to wring the most I can out of the costume. One of the greatest changes is the head, which used to have two bolts here and one there, and it would take half an hour, 30 minutes, to put on. So they never wanted to take it off, so it was always very hot. Now it takes six seconds to, to do. It looks the same, but it works really well. So some very clever people have spent a lot of time redesigning elements. Uh, there was, of course, the moment when I had a red arm in uh, <laughs> um, The Force Awakens. 
I wasn't crazy about the red arm, and I used to argue with J.J. Abrams all the time. But um, he liked it, and he was in charge, so he got it. But at the end of the film, he gave 3PO back his gold arm. So there I am working with J.J. again on uh, the rights of Skywalker and having the best time, wow. absolutely the best time. But one of the things I have been doing, sitting on the set, sitting on airplanes and trains for the last year, is, is writing my memoirs of being C-3PO. This wasn't my title, DK, Dawn and Kindersley, said, if you call it what you want to call it, people who don't know Star Wars won't know what you're talking about. So I let them change it. And I agreed because in all of the films, 3PO introduces himself all the time, almost like <laughs> he has to, hello. I am C-3PO, and they go, mm, okay, <laughs> cool it. Um, so I'm quite proud of this, comes out uh, just before Christmas, just before the rise of Skywalker, which I do talk about, but uh, no spoilers. And it, it's uh, memories, both good and bad and sad and happy, uh, of all the, some of, most of the crazy stuff that happens on a film set, or indeed, the Oscar ceremonies, or on The Muppet Show, or Sesame Street, or in concerts. All the stuff that connects me to the world of Star Wars, and the world of Star Wars to me. Is it just a written book, or did you have maybe also the opportunity to, to put some nice behind-the-scenes photos in? What uh, is happening at the moment is I have written the book, uh, and now we are doing layouts of, um, I think there are four sections of photographs of um, stuff behind the scenes, stuff, pictures of things I own, artifacts that I have, just um, like a scrapbook, if you will. So yes, there are pictures. Great. And um, last question for me. I love these behind the scenes stories. Maybe you have some nice memories for me, wearing that costume, something goes wrong, that should exactly not go wrong. Exactly, I do. They're in the book. Can we have a teaser? A no. little teaser. Because I see some nice um, footage, I think it was a blooper, yeah. where they have to run um, in, in front of some kind of uh, green screen thing, and then uh, you uh, maybe fell down because you can't see so, so good in the yeah, costume. Th that's in the book. Okay. And uh, I will explain, and I explain what happened. And you're right, it was green screen, and there was too much green reflected in him, because they had to take that out by computer, and they just thought, we have to fix this. So they did, but they didn't tell me what they'd done, and you can read what happens. But just for the fans, it's always you in the real costume. It's no CGI, no movie. Not like Iron Man wearing a green uh, 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 CGI, so it's just a costume. Yeah. Yes, I'm trying to... Yeah. Of, in episode two, uh, there are some sequences that are CGI when he falls off because you couldn't yeah. fall off in that. But yes, it's always me. Uh, and I have said that I wasn't crazy about that sequence because you can tell it's not me and I think it did him a disservice. You know. But it, it's always me, yes. Um, there are some things looking back that we would have done with green, uh, but it wasn't available there. Sometimes green screen's really, really useful. But for the most part, he is who he is, and uh, he's not a cartoon, you know. So there's always me peering from these little lenses in the middle there, um, <laughs> hoping we can get this shot in less than 14 takes. <laughs> uh, anyway, so enjoy, enjoy. I am C-3PO, and enjoy The Rise of Skywalker. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.